Handoff, Damian Williams trying to get to the edge, breaks a tackle, 35, 30, Damian Williams, 20, stays in bounds, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Kansas City, Damian Williams runs to immortality and will be remembered forever in the Chiefs kingdom. A 38-yard touchdown run, and the Chiefs lead 30 to 20. That was the moment that the Chiefs knew they were going to win Super Bowl 54. It was one of the greatest moments in franchise history, and it's also the last time we saw the San Francisco 49ers. Now, three years later, we're getting a rematch here in Week 7. Hey everyone, and welcome into our game preview this week, presented by Crown Royal. My name is Matt McMullen, and this week we're joined by one of our favorite people. It's Peter Schrager from Good Morning Football. Peter, what's up, man? What's up, Matt? It's always great to join you. And I was on that field when Damian Williams breaks that touchdown, and you could almost feel like a collective, I would almost say joy, but also uh, this feeling of relief that the 50-year drought was finally over and Chiefs fans could truly celebrate being champions. The game was put away and it was one of the most amazing moments I was ever in a building for. That entire weekend, that entire day, I'll never forget it. Just being a Chiefs fan, being a, a native of Kansas City and, and being there in Miami to witness the Chiefs win the Super Bowl was, I mean, it was one of the greatest days of my life and to be there for it was just incredible. And now we see the 49ers here uh, in week seven, three years later, uh, still two very good teams. It's the same quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes and Jimmy Garoppolo. A lot of the same players are on both teams. And I want to start with this Chiefs offense against the 49ers defense. The Chiefs offense this year is the number one offense in the NFL in terms of scoring. They're averaging more than 29 points per game. They have the most touchdowns in the NFL, the most first downs in the NFL. They've been really good. And they've faced a lot of good defenses this season already, too. They faced two of the top five scoring defenses in the NFL this year in Tampa Bay and Buffalo. It doesn't get any easier this weekend either. They're facing the number two scoring defense in the league in San Francisco. What are your expectations for the Chiefs offense against this 49ers defense on Sunday? And how can they move the ball on these guys? Well, it's fun watching the Chiefs because you don't know who's going to hurt you each week. And it's like, we're still figuring out the offense. And it felt like last week was the MVS Juju game. We're like, all right, we're going to get those guys involved. And you know, earlier in the season, you had your Pacheco game and you have these guys and they're sprinkled them in here and there. And the one guy I'm waiting to see, I want to see a little more Sky Moore. Obviously, I know all the fans are too. We're starting to see some flashes, of course, but is he going to have the Sky Moore game? And obviously, when you talk about this, this 49ers defense, they're so good up front. They've got one of the best linebackers in football in obviously Fred Warner. But I think the Kelsey Jimmy Ward matchup is really going to be huge in this game. And Jimmy Ward's coming in off a broken hand with a giant club on his hand, which might hamper him, which might not hamper him. There was trash talk this offseason, as you guys all well know. And Kelsey, national tight end day, 33 years old, just goes about his business, leads the NFL in touchdowns, leads the Chiefs in scrimmage yards, and just continues to be the number one tight end in the league. I feel like this has to be a Travis Kelsey game, especially if that 49ers defense gets going early. Yeah, that'd be perfect on National Tight End Day. Of course, he's facing George Kittle in this game, one of the best tight ends in the NFL. And Greg Olson is on the call for the game in the broadcast booth. So all these great tight ends in one spot. Hopefully Kelsey has a big game in this one. Talking about Kittle, though, is a good segue to the 49ers offense, though, because they're a very interesting study schematically. In a league where everyone's forcing the ball deep down the field, they kind of do the opposite. They operate horizontally, almost. They're banking on the defense, making a mistake. Since Jimmy G took over in week three, this offense has the 28th most yards at the catch, so at the catch point, but the most yards after the catch in the NFL this year. They're a big yak team. How can the Chiefs defense slow down this 49ers offense on Sunday? And they got a heck of an addition on Thursday night, did they not? I mean, McCaffrey's not going to get 40 carries in this game, but you add McCaffrey to this offense, even if he's just dressed and he's out there in the red zone, and I think he might play. I know we're, you're, this is Aaron over the weekend and everything, but like I think he might go based on what I hear. And what they're going to do is they're going to use their pieces like chess pieces, like they always do. Use check is going to line out wide, and Debo is going to be in the backfield. And now McCaffrey could be wide receiver, or McCaffrey could be running back. It, they are a tough team to defend because you don't know who's toting the rock, and you have to follow where they're all lining up. That said, injuries across the offensive line. Last week, Atlanta shut the run down with them. And then if you make Jimmy Garoppolo beat you, with the exception of a one Saints regular season game in New Orleans a few years back, that Super Bowl season, I don't have a long reservoir of memories of Jimmy Garoppolo just throwing the team on his back and saying, hey, my arm will get it done. You know Ayuk's dangerous, you know Debo's dangerous, and you know if Christian McCaffrey's out there, he's not out there for window dressing, he'll do something. Um, 
they could run down your throats. And Green Bay has been the victim of that several times. And those other games, you shut down the run, but they're not going to scare you through the air. Yeah, talk about a Schefter bomb on Thursday night. I'm just scrolling Twitter, about to go to bed. I think Thursday night football was still on, and it's like the 49ers did what? <laughs> they traded for Christian McCaffrey. Matt, don't lie. You were up waiting for Taylor Swift. Who you <laughs> Maybe I was. Who knows? Um, but we'll see how much McCaffrey plays in this game. Obviously a huge addition to their offense. They have playmakers everywhere. I'm hopeful the Chiefs get some players back on defense uh, in this game. They were a bit undermanned uh, against the Bills last week, so we'll see what guys are back. Uh, they'll be up for this challenge. I also thought Spags' comments on little on young Joshua Williams was great. Like, hey, you're a rookie. He's a HBCU guy who was not expected to be thrown into the starting lineup, and he held his own and didn't play terrible. Like, you need those growing pains. You need to have those experiences as young guys. <clears throat> you start two rookies at corner against the Buffalo Bills, and you hang in there. Like, that, that's a, that's. That's good for the long term. Yeah, and you make a great point about Joshua Williams. At times, a tough game for him against the Bills, but at the end of the season, you need all of your guys. And what a great experience for him to hopefully call back on later in the year when he's called upon. He showed up on our on our Good Morning Football show during the pre-draft process in a full suit and tie. Everyone else comes with like sweatshirt or jeans and like this. Just, he was so professional, so hungry to be in the NFL, and so appreciative of the moment. He is a wonderful young man. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. Excited for him moving forward. Now, before I let you go, you launched a new podcast recently called The Season with Peter Schrager. It's awesome stuff. I listened to it last night. And I think Chiefs fans in particular will enjoy your latest episode because of your guest, right? Guest is Paul Rudd. Um, I've been honored to, to do the big slick event with Paul and we've become friendly enough. And I had to call in a favor with one of the early episodes of the podcast. And I said, we come on thinking it would be 10 or 20 minutes. We cut it up for 90 minutes. And it's not all Chiefs. It's a lot of stuff about his life and his experiences, but the Chief stuff is really good. I and mean, when we get into, you know, his relationship with Alex Smith, his relationship with, uh, with uh, Dustin Colquitt, um, we talk at length about, you know, what Mahomes has meant to the Chiefs fans. And Paul's a real Chiefs fan. You guys know that. Um, and when I say real Chiefs fan, I'm talking, texting me at all hours of the day to ask me like, what's Rashad Fenton's status? Like that kind of stuff. Like he is so in the weeds with it. And he'll reference a Dexter McCluster play from seven years ago, or he'll, uh, he'll tell me a story about Dwayne Bowe. Like, you know, that, do you remember when Bowe did this? Like, I don't remember when Dwayne Bowe did that. And whoever else have been through that building, um, that, 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 that's Paul. He loves it. And I would really ask everyone, if you like my stuff on Good Morning Football or like this, it's not just celebrities. We also interview coaches, GMs. The first episode was Robert Sala, 30 minutes interview with Sala. You get to know the guy. Um, and Paul Rudd was week two, but we continue to keep on having great guests. And I am sure someone from that Chiefs building, whether it be Big Red, whether it be Mahomes, and who knows, maybe the general manager, Brett Veach, they'll come on during the season. But thank you for talking about it. I really hope it, it's iHeartRadio in the NFL. It's called The Season with Peter Schrager. It's easy to listen, but you'll learn something. Yeah, awesome stuff. If you like the NFL, which obviously you do, if you're watching this, check out his podcast. It's super personable. You learn stuff that you didn't know previously. It's more than just the surface level uh, story. So check that out. Peter, you're the best. The kingdom loves you, man. You always have our back no matter what, wherever you are on your podcast, on Fox, on Good Morning Football, wherever. So uh, appreciate you, man. And thanks so much for your time today. Go Chiefs!